Hey guys, welcome back. I'm getting on here to try to do another live stream. Uh, I had a ton of requests, not a ton, but a, a few requests, enough requests to uh, finish up the cam on this telly neck that we did. We did a part one and a part two. This will be part three and we're just going to go over the cam. And then I have a little, a kind of a little trick that I just discovered. I mean, I guess I knew about it before, but a way to do a, a neck transition a little bit differently than we did in this on a Gibson scarf, scarf neck shape and really get a nice smooth transition. So first let's head up into Fusion and look at this neck. Um, so this isn't the exact same neck that we were working on. Um, oh geez, my uh, 3D mouse has just crapped out on me. So that's gonna make this interesting. Um, Sorry, uh, and I do not have my controls. This is going to be very interesting. Okay, but let's let's look at what we go here, um, what we've got here. So um, this is the uh, this is the uh, the telly neck that I did in a recent video. Uh, it, I call it the dragon telly neck because it has a dragon fretboard on it. Um, I can't position things the way I want to here because my menu is not visible and. And I do not know why. <laughs> a little bit of technical difficulty here, but we'll try to get through it. Um, so just to show you really quickly what I did here on this. Um, so the first thing I do is I cut this profile. And if you go back to that video, you can see this all happening too. Uh, I'm just cutting this extra material out here. So I need to hand drill this hole for the, the walnut plug. And so I cut out this material here, and then I have a little... Uh, a little spacer that I can um, clamp on the top and drill this hole through for and then I on the lathe I cut this little plug and I throw that in there glue it in and then I come back and uh, I do these just both of these two so I get a nice clean surface then I come back and I do my truss rod slot uh, that's pretty straightforward I, I use this 0.225 uh, bit it's a bit that's made for the uh, hot rod truss rods and I use that bit for this kind of stuff. Um, this is just, you know, choosing this profile. Uh, well, let's go in there and look at it a little bit. So I'm just choosing these contours right here. I've got a step down that is at, what do I have my step down at? Um, 0 0.0625, so a sixteenth of an inch. Um, and I'm, and you'll notice here uh, that I have, oh, for some reason I have axial stock to leave at 0 0.03, and that's wrong. <laughs> that should be zero um, but here we have radial stock to leave and I've got negative 0 0.01 and that's just the tolerance so the thing fits otherwise the fit is super tight but I want it to be tight but not at not super tight so that's what I do on that um, this is just a, a 3d pocket here that I'm doing a, a tenth of an inch step down and I'm just clearing out this material on this on this cave here and then I run a scallop my my normal scallop on the same geometry and uh, that cleans up that edge and then I run the bores right so this doesn't look very much like a neck at this point but then um, what I do this is very awkward <laughs> what I do is I I flip it around I can't control this thing right now because my controls are invisible and <laughs> my 3d mouse has stopped working so um, that, yeah, I'm just going to get through this one as best we can, and I'll try to do this again if you guys don't understand what's going on. On the back, it's pretty straightforward. Just a profile, tenth of an inch step down with uh, 60,000 stock to leave. Uh, then I do a cleanup pass here, um, and I'm, I'm, I've am I'm been considering doing these. Uh, these are all climb milling. Uh, everything I'm doing is climb milling, but that uh, truss rod slot and this finish cut right here, I could probably be a little bit more accurate if I went with conventional milling on these. So I'm going to experiment with that in the future and see if I get better results. Um, I, I tend to like climb milling just because of the way it um, uh, cuts the chips so that a chip starts thick and ends thin instead of starts thin and ends thick. Um, we can talk about the differences between climb and, and, uh, and conventional milling uh, at some other time, but so um, yeah, so this is 60,000, I had 60,000 stock to leave, so I'm doing 30,000 passes at a quarter inch down, and I usually run these at uh, 75 inches per minute. 
that's just what works for me on my machine. Uh, same thing as that uh, 3D pocket that we did over here to clear out space before we did the scallop. A tenth of a minute step down. I'm leaving 60,000 stock to leave again so that I have that material to cut off with the scallop. And that is pretty much all there is to it. It's very straightforward. Um, I th think this file might be on the Patreon page. If it's not on the Patreon page, I'll put this file in there um, so you guys can have a telling neck. There's no fretboard in this one, I don't believe, but uh, I might put one in uh, so you guys can have a telling neck for that. If you're not a Patreon member, it's $1 a month. I, I supply a ton of Fusion 360 content. If you have requests for the stuff that we're... Um, that that uh, you'd like to see on the channel. I can do that for you um, on the Patreon page. I apologize, this one was a little bit rough. Things have gone haywire on me. I've set up some new speakers and I'm trying to get some new setups going. Um, just constantly trying to improve the way things look. Um, but it's a little messy, I know. I hope it still helps someone uh, get through this process a little bit better and, and just showing what I'm doing. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna have to bag that idea for the for the contour on the headstock. I, I think it's a, gonna be a great live stream. Maybe I'll get that set up and get everything working properly, and I'll get that set up and do it tomorrow real quick. Um, but that was just a really quick one uh, to show you guys uh, my cam process for these Telecaster necks. It's pretty simple. Um, again, I'm well. Let's hop over here just one more time. Um, one of the things to notice here is that you can see the origin on my top. These two top cuts is right here on this point on the corner and then uh, on the back it's the exact one. So the same thing that I do with almost all my necks, I mill a piece of MDF and I'm using this piece. So I this is a joined surface and the top and the back are flat and this surface is joined and that's what I'm using to index um, the bit from. Uh, it's uh, I get a lot of messages, people talking about, you know, possibly doing the, the pins. <laughs> Sorry about that. Press the wrong button. Uh, a lot of uh, people talk about doing uh, the pins. Um, it requires more stock. Uh, it requires more setup. And uh, it's just not something that I, I've tried it. It's just not something that really has worked really well for me. And uh, this works very well. And I can set up a different kind of neck every day and do a lot of different kind of stuff. Uh, this is just what works for me. If you have something that works for you, that's awesome. Um, and if I was doing production, if I was trying to make as many of these as I could possibly make, I'd be doing it very differently. Uh, my preference, if I was going to do production style, would be uh, essentially the way that Tormach does on their um, CNC wood routers, um, and that's a vacuum bed. Uh, but for the kind of stuff that I do here, it's just really not necessary. It just, there's just no point to it. So... Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. I, I love the comments. I love to like put up a video based on what you guys say you need to learn or see. Um, but thanks for that. Uh, if you're not Patreon, join the Patreon. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. And uh, thanks. Have a good day.